James Gunn's Suicide Squad feels like the movie that Warner Brothers wanted David Ayer's Suicide Squad to be. Uh huh. Hey guys, it's Sean O'Connell, the managing editor here at Cinema Blend, with a review of James Gunn's new film, The Suicide Squad. If you clicked on this video and you're not exactly sure what's going on with this, um, The Suicide Squad, James Gunn's new movie, is not necessarily a reboot or a remake of David Ayer's movie. It's literally just a standalone Suicide Squad movie that James Gunn brought to the studio and said, I would like to make this film with these characters. This is an idea that I had in mind. And because Warner Brothers is not really trying to do the uh, connected cinematic universe anymore, they're allowed to do these sort of free-floating, strong ideas, kind of the way that Joaquin Phoenix made a Joker movie. They don't have to all tie in. Even though, yes, I know he includes a few of the same characters, much like Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn or Joel Kinnaman's Rick Flagg. What? It's a little bit confusing, but once the story kicks in, uh, you'll be able to pick up where it's going. Yes, very good. I'm going to dive into this review without spoilers. I'm not going to get into uh, any of the plot specifics or, of course, the who dies and doesn't die. But I want to give you guys an idea of how I felt about The Suicide Squad, uh, why I think it's actually worth your time, and why I think you should go to the, uh, the theater to go see it on the biggest screen possible. Are you in or out? The first point I want to make about James Gunn's The Suicide Squad is that it is unfiltered James Gunn. But if you only know James Gunn from his Guardians of the Galaxy films, uh, it's not quite that. The Guardians films sort of filtered what James Gunn had done prior as a filmmaker and put it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But for this, for what he's doing in Suicide Squad, you almost have to go back to his earlier films like uh, Slither and Super, and even back when he was making films for Troma, which is a studio that kind of unapologetically dives into uh, violence and gore in an over-the-top over way to almost make it comedic and entertain entertaining. And, and when you think about that, that sort of approach to filmmaking, this is why James Gunn was a great choice to make a Suicide Squad film, because if you go into it and truly every character is expendable, you might lose somebody significant at any given time. And James Gunn leans into that 110%. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now that leads to the humor, which can be, you know, sophomoric at times, but also really sharp. Uh, James Gunn gets a lot of really clever, funny jokes into this. But just, again, over-the-top violence and gore. Uh, to the point, you know, I've heard a few people talk about the fact, people who've been able to see it early, that it almost desensitized them after a while. And I get that. Um, you know, we're talking about a movie where uh, there's a character named King Shark who picks up people and just devours them whole. Nom nom. This is stuff that's being teased in the trailer, and you're going to get a lot more of that over the course of two hours. If that's if that's fine, if that's what you're hoping to get out of Suicide Squad, you're going to get it in spades. But it really is, for all the heat that Warner Brothers gets uh, off and on recently from fan bases who say that, that the studio over controls or manipulates its directors, it didn't do that here at all. James Gunn was given free reign to just run amok, and he gives us probably the most James Gunn movie I've seen in a long, long time. What's the plan? How the hell am I supposed to know? You're the leader. You're supposed to be decisive. And I've decided that you should eat a big bag of dicks. But James Gunn has also evolved as a storyteller, and that's why The Suicide Squad has a lot more heart than I anticipated. He knows how to take an oddball team and make us truly invest in their progress emotionally. So yes, in Suicide Squad, while people can be disposed of pretty easily, you're gonna to start to root for some characters that you necessarily didn't expect. And this is where the evolution of James Gunn really kicks in because he does an outstanding job of making us care about characters who are largely digitally created or used with visual effects to bring them along. I gotta single out King Shark. It's a really good performance that's a mix of motion capture, visual effects, uh, voice work. Sylvester Stallone is the voice of King Shark eventually, but there's uh, an actor named Steve G who played King Shark on the set. And, and you're gonna invest in King Shark the way you do someone like Rocket Raccoon or Groot even. I wanna single out Daniela Melchior, who plays a character named Ratcatcher 2, who from the very minute that she comes on scene, she earns our sympathies and we invest in her journey. I am someone who despises rats. Like I just, that, that is my phobia. I can't, I can't stand mice or rats in any way, shape or form. She has the ability to control rats. And so there are a lot of moments in Suicide Squad, in the Suicide Squad where rats are flooding into areas. And by the end of this movie, James Gunn made me care about her and the rats that she controlled. It's a combination of the way that he approaches the character and also just her outstanding performance. I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. 
that's a little bit different than the way that James Gunn approaches Peacemaker as he's played by John Cena. It's not quite as much heart uh, put into the John Cena character because he is legitimately a psychopath. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. Bruh. And while it's really intriguing what John Cena is setting up with Peacemaker uh, in this film, and it leaves a lot of questions unanswered, what I think that's going to propel us forward, and I don't think Gunn was even thinking along these lines because the idea of the Peacemaker series came up later, but I do think that the HBO Max series is going to allow James Gunn and John Cena to explore even further this really fascinating character. It's one of those things where with the Suicide Squad, because there are so many people to get to, you have to make room for Idris Elba, you have to make room for Pete Davidson, um, for the digital creator creation that is Weasel, who's played by Sean Gunn. Not every character gets a chance to shine quite to the level that you'd want them to. Scene is fascinating, and the way that he plays him is really interesting, but I want to learn more about this character. It's not quite in this movie, but I think we'll get it in the Peacemaker series. Starfish is a slang term for a butthole. Think there's any connection? And of course that comes around to uh, Margot Robbie and the way that she plays Harley Quinn. It's been fascinating to see Margot sort of evolve her approach to Harley and it's fun to see her in the hands of a new director, a new storyteller, because there are certain things that she puts a stamp on and absolutely brings to the character, but you can see a lot of fun things that James does with her as well too, to make her fit into the story that he wants to tell. Now we've seen Margot, you know, under David Ayer, under Kathy Yan in Birds of Prey, and now under James Gunn. And I think this is the type of character, and especially the way that this actress portrays her, that you can really pick her up and put her into a bunch of different places, and she's going to find new ways to evolve her uh, and the way that she portrays her on screen each new time we see her. And I think that that's fantastic. That's sort of a throwback to the way that comic book artists pick up these characters and use them in different ways to manipulate them into the stories that they want to tell. But I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that James Gunn has evolved significantly as a storyteller who makes us care about his characters and it works really well in The Suicide Squad. You were gonna save me? It was a really good plan too. Well, I can go back inside and you can still do it. That's patronizing. So where would I rank this in terms of uh, Harley Quinn performances? I'm putting it right below Birds of Prey. Uh, I think Birds of Prey really gave her the opportunity to carry a film. And, you know, I learned a lot more about Harley. I got to see a lot more different sides of Harley. That one tapped into a lot more of the lunacy of her, the unpredictability of her. Here, she's part of an ensemble. You know, she has to serve different needs and she gets one part of a storyline that's her own, but I don't want to go into it too much. But it really is how she works with the other members of the team. I'm only putting David Ayer's interpretation of Harley last is because I don't think we've seen his true interpretation. And that's not really fair to judge. That movie is special because it was the first kind of look as Margot playing Harley, and you know, it, it earns a lot of bonus points for being that initial interpretation. But until we're able to see the air cut and to really see how he wanted to use that character, I'm afraid that's gonna have to be behind uh, what Kathy Ann and James Gunn got out of her. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Had to go number two. Good to know. So the final point I wanna make about The Suicide Squad is that strangely, it feels like the kind of movie that Warner Brothers tried to force David Ayer's movie to become, and it, it couldn't be that. Like, David Ayer's movie was never going to become this sort of, it's not lighthearted, but it has a tone that it adheres to um, from the from the moment it started shooting all the way through till the final frame. And what happened with Ayer's film is that he tried to make a serious and sort of grounded character-driven Suicide Squad movie. And Warner Brothers, you know, halfway through the production cycle decided they were gonna reconfigure it and we've heard David Ayer say that like they wanted to make it more like Deadpool, put in more jokes, uh, make it more make it more humorous. And you just can't do that with footage that's been shot to be serious. James Gunn from the very beginning started with his own sensibilities, which combines the sort of lethality um, of the Suicide Squad with the ability to you know to dive into these lunatic characters and allow them to build towards uh, a larger threat you know that that emerges in the third act. When you think about it, the two movies truly are. Um, partners, the way that they move forward. You have Amanda Waller recruiting a team because she has a, a larger mission that, you know, you need these villains to almost complete. And then it, it becomes a question of how long can these villains stay together? And will they be, be able to triumph over this larger threat in the end of the movie? In the David Ayer version, it was Enchantress. It wasn't supposed to be Enchantress. I think it was supposed to be Steppenwolf. Uh, and in the James Gunn version, it's Starro. Oh my God, we've got a freaking kaiju up in this shit. So it's weird to see how similar they really are and to sort of see that now the theatrical cut of David Ayer's film is the only one that we've seen so far. You can really see that that's the movie that they wanted to shape Suicide Squad into. And instead they just gave uh, James Gunn this open blueprint and said, do it your way. 
and we'll uh, we'll release it in that format. So, you know, part of it might be Warner Brothers sort of learning from their mistakes. Uh, part of it might be, you know, this is a studio that that should, uh, along this uh, line, trust in their filmmakers that they're hiring to tell their stories. I'm hoping that we're seeing more and more of that going forward. It sounds like Matt Reeves is getting a chance to tell the Batman story that he wants to tell. Uh, Andy Muschietti right now is very busy filming The Flash, and it seems to be uh, the production that he wants to put forward. And James Gunn has said from the get-go that he had the ability and the freedom to do as much as they wanted to do uh, in this film. And this, this movie works well because of that. Uh, yes, it's going to make some people lament, like, why can't we see the original version of David Ayer's film? But to judge this film uh, on its own, to ju uh, judge James Gunn's movie on its own, it truly is the Suicide Squad movie that, that Warner Brothers should have put out first. Like, it's, it's unfortunate that this came later, but had this been the first introduction to the Suicide Squad, I think that that brand and that franchise would have been launched on a much stronger platform, and we wouldn't have this uh, what-if scenario that surrounds it of had we been able to stay in sort of the Snyderverse and continue in the dark direction that David Ayer wanted to go. Um, you know, James Gunn's movie isn't perfect. It lulls in a couple of different areas, but I definitely do think that, you know, from a Suicide Squad point of view, this is the movie that should have launched the franchise. We fail the mission, you die. If we find out any information you give us is false, you die. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you die. What? No. One thing I want to mention about The Suicide Squad is if you are going to see it, and I definitely think you should see it, if you feel safe, go to the theaters and see it. James Gunn shot the majority of the film, if not the entire film, uh, using IMAX cameras. And it's the kind of movie that really does warrant the big screen attention. And I know it's going to be hard because it's available day and date on HBO Max, but there are certain movies that just play better on the big screen. Suicide Squad will play better on the big screen. I know it will. The director designed it to be played in IMAX. He designed it to be played big. I want you guys, when you go see it, as long as you feel comfortable, to go out to the theaters and see it in that format. I'm giving it four stars out of five. It does lull a little bit. It gets off to a fantastic start, establishes all of its characters, you know, juggles as much of it as it can with the plot going forward, and then ends really, really strong. I'm not giving any details away. I want you guys to be as surprised as I was going into it. I think it's a really fun uh, DC movie, and I know that DC fans hate hearing the word fun, but it's not. It's entertaining. And as long as you like James Gunn, and as long as you like these characters, and the way that they're portrayed by different people, I mean, you're going to fall in love with all new characters. You're going to fall in love with Polka Dot Man. I mentioned Ratcatcher 2, King Shark, and then, you know, there's a lot of fun characters from the past who surface as well, too, from the old movie uh, and pop up in this one here, too. It's just, uh, I, it's a wild ride. Strap in for some of the violence. It can get a little bit over the top, but as long as you know what that's you're getting going into it, I think you guys are going to be entertained by James Gunn's new film, The Suicide Squad. I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Tell me how it worked for you, which characters that you loved and which characters didn't work for you. Do you want to see James Gunn sort of continue in this universe? While you're here on the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and as soon as we drop a new video, you guys can come on over here and watch and hear what we have to say.